everyone, it's Lucy from KimBeautyHubber.com. It's December, which means it's time for best and worst of 2022 videos. I am filming both today. I'm not yet sure which one will go up first, but they will both be up on the channel. I try to post every Saturday, so if you are interested in this, definitely subscribe and turn on that notification bell and kind of stay tuned. These products are the ones that absolutely did not impress me in 2022. Not all of them were 2022's releases, but they came into my personal skincare arsenal in 2022. Actually, not all of these are skincare and not all of them are Asian products, but I thought they still deserved a little warning to the public. These are no particular order, let's just get into it. The first one is Bellflower Vitamin C Serum. I hate this thing. First of all, it came looking like this, this color. It was this color straight out of the bottle. I reached out to the brand because in all of their marketing materials, they don't show the color of the serum. They show the bottle and they have all these pretty product pictures, but no color. At first I couldn't tell if maybe the bottle that I received oxidized or maybe it was already defective, but eventually they did respond to me and say, no, we put some ingredients in there to make it more stable and it gives it that color. Okay, fine. That's not really the deal breaker for me, it's not that important. The color is not that important. Once I knew that it was fine to use and it wasn't oxidized or expired, okay, fine. The real issue is the vitamin C serums are best used in the mornings because they can kind of amp up the antioxidant action of your sunscreen and they can make sunscreen more effective. They're not a replacement for SPF, but they're kind of a good buddy for the SPF. So that's how I use my vitamin C serums. I use them in the mornings. This one is so oily and greasy and sticky, and it makes sunscreen yucky and greasy and sticky. I started using this around the same time that I was testing one of the sunscreens, and a sunscreen that I started using, at first it was fine, like it was matte, kind of good to the touch, but I always use the product many, many times before I write a review, so I kept testing it and testing it and testing it, and after introducing the serum, that sunscreen was all sticky and greasy and tacky to the touch all day, even after powder. And I thought, oh no, the sunscreen is probably crap. And then I thought back and was like, wait, no, it was okay when I started it. And the only new thing in my morning routine is the serum. Is it maybe the serum? So I tried the serum with one of my other sunscreens that I already knew that I liked. I already knew how they wore it and how they behaved and things. And yep, sure enough, it's this yucky serum really don't like the texture of it. I'm not going to throw it away. What I am doing with this is I'm putting it on my legs because I have some hyperpigmentation there. It's mostly gone, but I had some issues with ingrown hairs and it took forever to clear up. I have a whole video about it on my channel. You can check out what I've done to sort of help mitigate that. But I'm still using some brightening products on the legs for that purpose. So I am using that as a body product in the evenings after bathing, before lotion. I can deal with slightly sticky legs. I cannot deal with a sticky, greasy face during the day. That's a no-go for me. Number two is the ever-popular, fantastic marketing, the miracle of marketing, really, Kahi Balm. It smells divine and it costs a lot. It costs about 40 bucks. I think you can find some specials, but still, this is expensive. It's supposed to be a multi-purpose product. You're supposed to be able to put on your lips, on your hair, under the eyes. It's just not doing much for me for the price. I didn't pay for this, this was PR. I did choose it because I wanted to try it, just like everybody else. We all saw this in K-dramas. We all saw it all over social media. Like I said, it's a marketing masterpiece and every marketing student probably should study how Kahi did their product placement because they blew up like that. I mean, it's just so amazing how they did their marketing. But as a product, this is underwhelming. On the lips, it gives me this nasty taste. I don't lick my lips, but if I put this on the lips, I immediately have a really disgusting taste in my mouth. Putting it on the hair ends is really difficult because it's a balm, and there are way cheaper hair products, like hair oils and little pump hair serums that work way better and are easier to put on the hair. So that leaves it as a face product. It is kind of tacky slash sticky-ish. It's not terrible, but CeraVe Healing Ointment is $11 for a giant jar and it works better. The way I've been using this is for targeted slugging, especially before I was ready to put any retinoids under my eyes. I would do my full skincare routine, including moisturizer, and let it sort of set in, and then I would put this balm under the eyes and sometimes under the nose a little bit to protect those sensitive areas from tretinoin. And then I would put tretinoin all over. 
or even without tretinoin if it's really dry, cold, not enough moisture in there, not enough water in there, and everything gets dry overnight, especially the under eye areas, you can use this to seal in your eye cream or anything else really. It's good for that, but do you need to pay $40 for this? Absolutely not, absolutely not. I mean, it smells good. It smells better than the CeraVe healing ointment, I'll give it that. Other than that, really just, it's just overhyped and in my opinion, absolutely not worth it. It was kind of a fail. Not enough of a fail for me to throw it out or anything. I will still use it, but just not worth the money. If this was a $10 product, awesome, yep, totally get it, try it, great, but for $40, no thank you. My one non-Asian product in this video, totally horrible fail, is Olive and June Instant Manny. These are their press-on nails. I did a tutorial slash review video on my channel. You can find it under nails playlist. These are so terrible. I can't find a one good thing to say about them, other than when first applied the same day that you apply them, they do look pretty decent. These are super, super curved to a point of it being difficult slash painful to apply them because they are way more curved than an average nail bed. And then the very next day, these ones are glittery. So you'll see that they're white base and then there's glitter on it. And it looks really pretty, right? But the glitter is then covered in a clear coat. So it's the base that the base nail that's plastic and it's white, then the glitter coat and then the clear coat. The clear coat started to come off the very next day after application. Then there was nothing left to hold the glitter down. So then the glitter started rubbing off and okay, fine, I could maybe say, well, just the glitter ones are defective. Maybe their other colors are better or the ones that are more solid with no glitter, maybe that's better. But then, on day three or four, my thumb uh, nail just completely cracked. This was so horrible. I mean, just terrible. And the company's response was, well, that's not usually the feedback that we get and you should take these back to Target. I'm not going to take these back to Target. I did buy them with my own money. I made a video that is monetized. I put out a review. For my purposes, these served their job. They did their job for me. I tried them, I reviewed them, I made some content fine, but it's kind of a strange response from the brand of, well, that's not usually the feedback we get. Well, guess what? When I posted my stories about these being super curved and just not the best shape, etc., I did have people respond saying, that's right, these hurt. These don't work well for me either. So I don't know what sort of feedback the brand is relying on. Is it just for the things that they send to people for like sponsored content or gifted? Sometimes not to say that people are dishonest when they get gifted products. A lot of the stuff that I'm showing today was gifted. But sometimes we as humans just have this innate sense of gratitude for the gifted thing. Even though if you're required to do a review, that's not really a gift. That's a trade. But sometimes we just have this built-in sense of gratitude and we want to like something because somebody gave it to us for free. Okay? So sometimes the gifted campaigns do tend to get more positive feedback than if it were not a gifted campaign, if you know what I mean. But for me, these are terrible. I do hear that their nail polishes are very nice. I'm not a polish person. As far as that, I, I prefer stickers and, and press-ons and things like that, but these press-ons were a total, total fail, just absolutely horrible. Probably one of the most anticipated launches of 2022 was the new Claire's All Day Airy Sunscreen. Claire's used to have two sunscreens that were crowd favorites. They had the white package one with the silver detailing that people loved that I never got to try. It was, I think, either chemical or mixed filters, I think all chemical, and it had no white cast, and people just adored it. And then with the whole SPF fiasco where a bunch of brands got tested and didn't test to the stated SPF on the label, a lot of brands just voluntarily stopped selling their SPFs as they continued testing them. And so this one was one of the most weighted releases. They also used to make a blue bottled sunscreen that was mineral that I personally loved and I'm so sad that it got discontinued and I wish that one would get brought back. Either way, people really, really look forward to this one. And if you look at reviews online, you will see that a lot of people like it. And that's great. I always hope people enjoy the things that they buy, especially if they're spending their own money and it's not like a PR package. But for me, this was terrible so sticky, so greasy, unusable really even on the body because my hands would just stick to things. I could feel this for 
ever after it just would never sink in and i put all spf products around my eyes as well and the first time i used this for a full day i was sitting at work in the office and i could just feel my eyelids sticking to themselves every time i'd blink i could feel this heavy yucky sunscreen on them i had to go to the bathroom halfway through my work day and rinse my eyes out that's how bad it was and typically my eyes are not sensitive typically i can use any sort of formula physical chemical combination filters whatever around my eyes with no problem Thankfully, I didn't wear makeup that day because I'm pretty lazy and most of the time I don't wear makeup to work So I could just rinse it out and didn't have to deal with running mascara or anything like that But gross and I've tried it more times after that just to see if it was a fluke that one time and ugh, Every time so I ended up using it up on my legs Which is not the best way to use up something this pricey. It's not a cheap product It's not the most expensive sunscreen, but it's not cheap. It's not two dollars or five dollars so if you tried it and loved it great I'm very happy for you for me it's a total fail no thank you another vitamin C fail this one is from Medicube this is the deep Vita C ampule the cool things about this is you get three of these bottles in the set with one dropper and the bottles are individually sealed they have little screw on caps so you only open a bottle once you're ready to use it and that way you have the fresher vitamin C every time you don't have to have a big bottle with all three of these with the volume of all three of these inside. That's kind of nice. The not nice thing is the smell. I've heard people talk about some vitamin C's smelling like pork or like dirty hot dog water, and I personally have never experienced that. The vitamin C's that I've used have all either smelled like some sort of citrus fruit or they didn't smell like anything. Until this. This one smells like steamed pork. Um, I can't, I, I couldn't get past the smell. I did use this up on my body and even putting it on my body away from my face, no, no thank you. It is so disgusting. I do know some people online, some influencers that have tried this and they are dealing with the smell because this vitamin C works for them and their skin does not tolerate other vitamin C products. So this is the only one that they can use without having sort of some sort of reaction. In that case, maybe it's worth it. For me, I just, I can't get past the smell. I'm not huge on fragrances in general. I, I'm okay with fragrance, I'm not anti-fragrance, but I like unscented products most of the time, or ones that smell not super strong and with some sort of pleasant smell. This is super strong and very unpleasant. A bad combination. Ugh, no. Stay away from that if you're sensitive to smells or if you don't want to walk around smelling like a steamed pork. This one is a really confusing product, although I know other products in this category and maybe the whole category is just not for me. This is Alicia Koi B Break Massage Cream and it says Massage and Cleansing Cream. You're supposed to put it on over dry skin, massage it around and then rinse off. That sounds very similar to how cleansing balms are used, right? Well, cleansing balms emulsify, first they turn into oil, kind of melt on the skin, you massage it on, and then you put water over that and the balm emulsifies, turns clear, or turns white rather, and then rinses off, right? This is not like that. It also smells like, um, Mm, I'm gonna try and be politically correct, but let's just say that this smells like something my great-great-great-grandma might enjoy, if you know what I mean. But fine, we can get past the smell maybe. It looks like this, it's pink. It really does go on like face cream, but then you're supposed to rinse it off and it doesn't rinse off clean. It doesn't emulsify, it just kind of comes off in chunks and then it leaves behind this weird filmy feeling like there's still something left on the skin maybe if somebody has superbly dry skin and their skin cannot take a cleanser and cannot take a foaming cleanser can't use facial soaps even the mild ones or anything like that maybe this is the answer but i think in that case i would actually steer people toward that isn't tree vegan yam milk cleanser that i showed or will show in my best of 2022 video again not sure which ones which one will go up first but that cleanser is great. This one, I've used it to shave my legs a couple of times because it does provide like a nice slip for the razor. I'm trying to use it up. It also expires really soon here. So I'm trying to use it up before it totally croaks. I've tried it a couple of times on my face and I just don't like it. Pond's cold cream probably has similar vibes, right? Back when people used to use that or some probably still do to remove makeup 
this has similar vibes except with ponds i think you also can use it as a moisturizer and just leave it on this one you're supposed to rinse off but it's just yeah that's just not for me it's not my favorite product category the cleansing creams i've also tried one by the siam before years 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 ago that one was better this one is just bad last but not least is this mcqueen new york volume fix essential lip oil I wanted to love this product so much because look how cute it is. It is so cute. It's this little bottle with a metallic lid. It came in a Yes Style, I think, calendar, advent calendar last year, but it had a really good expiration date if unopened until like 2025 or 2026, I think. So I just left it alone until I was ready to use it. Uh, initially, I didn't love this applicator. It's not a fuzzy doe foot, it's a little uh, plastic one. But after reading how you're supposed to use this, so this is supposed to be either applied on bare lips before makeup or even as a sleeping mask, or you can put it on over lip makeup and that's where having a plastic or silicone little applicator that you can wipe off before putting it back in, that's where that comes in handy. Because if you're putting this on over lipstick, you're going to get your lip color on it and then when you put it back in, you know, you're going to contaminate everything or make everything a different color. So that's kind of nice, I guess. The applicator is not the problem here. The problem is this product dries my lips out and it's very sticky. I mostly tried it without makeup, so without lip makeup over it or under it. I just like sometimes a little glossy look or a little glossy feel or sometimes when my lips are dry, and I don't want to put chapstick on, I want to put something like this on or like what I'm wearing, which is the Rotha Mentholatum Lip Fondue. I just want something a little fancier than lip balm, you know, as we get sometimes. This one isn't it. It starts out sticky and it stays sticky and then it makes my lips dry up to a point where you can see very clear vertical lines in them and everything just kind of gets like, I don't know, dehydrated almost. It's just, ugh. I don't know. I can't really give it to anybody because of hygiene reasons. Obviously, I've used this to lip product, you know, not something you can give to somebody else. I don't want to throw it out. It's not absolutely horrible. So the way that I've been using it is put lip balm on, like a clear colorless one first to sort of get that hydration slash or moisture rather and then the protective layer there. And then I'll put this one on just for a little bit of shine. But yeah, I haven't used much of it as you can see. I reviewed it already because after two or three times I knew I hated it. So I got the review published. But yeah, I just, it's, it's so cute and so bad. <laughs> That's it for the worst of 2022. I really don't get that many terrible products. Oh, well, first of all, I think the brands typically try their best to release something good. Uh, and second, it's much more likely to get something mediocre or something that doesn't work specifically for me, or something that's just not very impressive, versus to get something that inspires just sheer hatred, right? Like, it's rare to get an Olive and June level of fail when it comes to beauty products, at least for the things that I tend to try or brands that I tend to work with. There are some fails, though, still, and these are the ones that I could come up with. Please leave your own fails in the comments, because I really like reading about your fails. Not that I want anything to be a fail for you, but you know, sometimes sometimes negative reviews are just more fun to read. And also, if you tried any of the things that I showed and you love them, please also share that. Like I said, I always hope that people love the things that they buy because you're spending your own money and of course I want you to love it. That is way more important than you agreeing with my opinion because it's just an opinion. So thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you had fun. I hope this was entertaining or helpful or both. You can find me on Instagram at kbeautyhobbit, my blog kbeautyhobbit.com and in my private Facebook group Korean Beauty Fanatics. I will see you in my next video and until then please remember to always listen to your skin. Thank you so much. Bye.